Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. Our daily rest. Our daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And lead us not. Lead us not, dear Lord. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. For you want to die the kingdom and power forever and ever. To my God. Jesus is calling November 3rd. Every time someone, something, thwarts down your plans or desires, use that as a reminder to communicate with me. This practice has several benefits. The first is obvious. Talking with me blesses you and strengthens our relationship. Another benefit is that disappointments, instead of dragging you, you down, or dragging you down, are transformed into opportunities for good. This transformation removes the sting from difficult circumstances, making it possible to be joyful in the middle of adversity. Begin by practicing this discipline in all the little disappointments of daily life. It is often these minor setbacks that draw you away from my presence. When you reframe setbacks as opportunities, you find that you gain much more than you have, but it is only after much training that you can accept major losses in this positive way. But it is possible to attain the perspective of the Apostle Paul, who wrote compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus. I consider everything I once treasured to be as insignificant as rubbish. Colossians chapter 4 verse 2, Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. You know, when you have something go wrong, what you should have done instead of making a mountain out of a molehill was to go to God first. You were very fortunate that that person was a godly person, too. And once everything was explained and that person helped you, yep. you should have went to God first to give you the strength. You can't do anything without God. Right. Okay? All right. Always go to God first before you act. Right. And he gives you solution. Yep. You cannot do anything in your own power. Right. God is the one that is in control. All right. Okay, so we're going to start reading. And this is a this is very important now. The apostles are now at the preparation of the apostles for the end. As Jesus now continues his extensive tour north through Caesarea, Philippi, and south again into Galilee, 
He uses this time to prepare his chosen disciples for his death and to strengthen their ministries carrying on his work. At this point, Jesus' ministry, the apostles are truly convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. But apparently they too have notions of a political Messiah, re realizing that their understanding of his Messiahship is still very limited and that their somewhat sophisticated faith, simplistic faith, will be tested. Jesus begins to tell the apostles about his death as well as the burdens which they themselves will face. Talk of their leader's imminent death must surely confuse these men who have hopes of playing key roles in a wholly different kind of kingdom. The highlight of this period of preparation comes when Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, who seem to be the inner circle of the disciples, to apparent Mount Hermon. There, Jesus is transfigured into what is evidently more than a mere vision. Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus as representatives of the law and the prophets. The subsequent disappearance of Moses and Elijah, as well as the words of confirmation spoken from heaven, indicated to the three disciples the demise of the demise demise of the former dispensation and the supremacy of the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus. Even with this demonstration to the inner three and, dis and dispute Jesus warn despite Jesus' warnings about humanity, humility, humility in the use of their miraculous power, it is not long before the disciples began to dispute among themselves as to who among them is the greatest. Jesus sets a young child before them as an example of humility and teaches them about temptation, discipline, and forgiveness. The gospel account records here a, here a confession by Peter that Jesus is Christ, using the word rock symbol, symbolically since Peter's name means rock, Jesus says it is upon the rock of Peter's confession of Christ that Jesus' kingdom will be established. Bob? I know. Peter acknowledges Christ. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? He replied, some say John the Baptist, or you say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Wherever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Suffering foretold. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the key priests, and the teachers of the law. And that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are, you are a stumbling block to me. 
you do not have a mind that, that concerns a God, but merely human concerns. For it is the discipleship. Then he called in the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be a disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone gain the, to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? But what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me, my and my words of in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angels. Kingdom within lifetime, he said to them, I truly tell you, some of who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Jesus transfigured. At the six days, Jesus took him, Peter, James, and John, the brother James, and led them up the high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Then just there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put out three, shel three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still seeking a bright cloud covering him, with a voice of the one of God's head, This is my son, who I love, with him, and I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Apostles asked about Elijah. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you've seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Then the, the disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking about John the Baptist. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at the time what they had seen. Epileptic Boy Healed When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing about with them? What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who was possessed by a spirit and has robbed him of speech. Whenever it, seizes, it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I ask your disciples to draw out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelievable generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. Then the spirit, when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground, rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has he been like this? 
from childhood, he answers. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father explained, I do believe, but help me to overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a... I got to pause for a little bit. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure, sure, impure sir, spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciple asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you had so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move this mountain, move it from here to there, and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. This kind comes out only by prayer. Death again foretold. They left the place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know they were there because he was teaching his disciples. And he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. A coin from the fish's mouth. After Jesus and his disciples arrived at Capernaum, the collector of the two Dutch, Dutch mark temple, tax, temple, temple tax came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Jesus came into the house, when Peter came into, when the, Peter house. Came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him, so that we may not cause offense. Go to the lake, throw out your line, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you'll find a four. Back one coin take it and give it to them for my tax and yours your turn apostles dispute about rank they came to capernaum when he was in the house he asked them what were you arguing about on the road but they kept quiet because on the way they have argued about who was the greatest Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to, will he say to the servant when he comes? In front of the field, come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, perhaps my silver, prepare my silver, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will, you, will he think? The servant because he did what he was told to do. So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, 
we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Concern for the young. Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it will be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, but I tell you that your angels in heaven always see the peace of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go back for the one had wandered off? And if he find it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep, about the ninety-nine that didn't want wander off. In the same year, the same year, your Father in Heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Warning about temptation, go to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble, such things must come. But woe to the person to whom they come. If you hear your if you hear a foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is right for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, fuck it out, it is right for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the ones eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everybody, everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but there was the saltiness. How can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. Works done in Jesus' name. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Don't stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, if anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose the reward. Rebuke and discipline. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take two, one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by a testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it, tell it, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to even listen to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Apostles given authority. I truly tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. 
and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in their name, there I am with them. And tonight, when we were praying, there was two or more storming heaven to God for this nation. Peter asked about forgiveness. This is a good one. When Peter came to Jesus and asked, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Now Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. If they sin again against you seven times in a day, seven times come back and to you and say, I repent, you must forgive them. Parable of a servant in debt. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle, account, settle accounts with his servant. He began the settle <clears throat> he began the settlement, a man who owed, owed him. 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all had, be, had to be sold to repay the debt. His servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison till he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that happened. Then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I canceled all the debts of yours because you begged, begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, Master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Heavenly Father, Lord, the best name me, Jesus. If the devil's no will follow me, not believe any of his lies, all to remember the devil offers five line signs and big wonders. November 1st. No, it's November 3rd. Oh, 3rd. I'm so tired tonight. Experience a delightful relationship with the Savior who loves to hear your prayers. My great God, please train me in steadiness. I confess that too many things interrupt my awareness of you. I live in a world of sight and sound, but I don't want to be a slave to the stimuli and surround, that surround me. I know it's possible to be aware of your presence in all circumstances, no matter what is happening. This is the steadfast, steadfastness that I deeply desire to practice in my life. Help me not to let the unexpected events throw me off a course. Instead of getting upset or anxious, I want to respond kindly and confidentially remember that you are with me. As soon as something grabs my attention, I can talk with you about it. Thus, I share both my joys and my sorrows with you, and you enable me to cope whatever is before me. Lord, I invite you to live in me more fully 
and to work your way, both in me and through me. I want to be a challenge for your peace to flow into this troubled world. In your soothing name, Jesus, amen. This is a prayer that we pray, and we I pray it for all of us, all of us. Be still and know that I am God. I can't believe that November is just flying by. And a application accepted. Long ago, even before God made the world, God chose us to be his very own through what Christ would do for us. He decided then to make us holy in his eyes without a single fault. We who could stand before him covered with his love. Applications are essential for glean, gleaning the promising applicants from, from the inadequate. Fill out this form and find if you're approved for your home loan or college admittance or a credit card. We put our best qualities on paper week or week, tweak our weaknesses and hope for an approval. But rejection is always possi a possibility. With God, however, our acceptance has already been promised. We must only appeal to his son, Jesus, who steps in on our behalf and petitions for our approval. There's no credit for, no failing grade, no past default, that his death on the cross doesn't redeem completely. Because we are covered with his loving forgiveness, there is no flaw in us. We are accepted by God as part of his family and redeemed by his grace, by his eternal kingdom. God, I stand on that promise that there is nothing in my history or my present sin that can separate me from your love. I cast everything on you and I believe that I am wholly accepted and abundantly loved. Yes, we are. God is God and we shall always know it. Chasing God's best. He holds my hand. Your greatest, your greatest regret at the end of a life, your life will be the lions you didn't chase. You'll look back longingly on the risk you did not take, opportunities not seized, dreams not pursued. Stop running away from what scares you the most and start chasing the God ordained opportunities that cross your path. And that's what we are trying to do. And God says, each day you have a choice to seize the opportunities I have for you or to live with hesitancy and indecision. If you, indecision, you've held back hoping your impossible situation will be resolved or that your family would straighten up. I'm just hoping that too. Or that your sorrow would disappear. I ask you to welcome my embrace, embrace and find safety and protection in my arms during these trying times. I'll watch you grow in spiritual maturity as you seek to live in my presence day and night. Now I want you to consider a big step. Instead of waiting to serve in your church or going on a mission trip, or get involved in a service organization, or start teaching a Bible study, or to mentor someone younger, I'm asking you to make yourself available right now in the middle of your adversary without every detail of this hard place work out resolved. I'm inviting you to give me everything you are, everything you have, from the depths of your greatest weakness. Chase the dream I placed in your heart. Pursue my leading without making excuse. Don't settle for anything less than the highest and the best calling I have for you. I am with you, and I promise you will lack for nothing. I cry out to you, God Most High, 
to God who will fulfill his purpose for me, and which is true. We cried out, we cried out, we cried out tonight for you, God, to save our country, save our country from destruction. Heavenly Father, I come tonight to pray for all the people that are in the United States. I pray for those that Christians that are not going to go out to vote on Tuesday. Vote on Tuesday. Don't sit at home on your hands. This is a command and a gift from God that we received. Vote for God and vote for life because God has given us all life. That's all that I can say. So, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart tonight. He sure is. Believe me. Or I wouldn't keep saying it. Like I was like, I prayed at the church tonight. If we can reach just one person, we have done a job and reward in heaven. Because that one person can reach another person. And we just take one day at a time to get God's word out. May God bless you and keep you. And may his light shine upon you. Good night. In the name of Father, and Son, and Holy Ghost, to take care of yourselves. Good night and amen.